seen men and women with brave hearts defying violence, scorning intimidation, and defending their rights to uphold our laws. The miners' strike in 1984 was, a, was an important turning point in the history of Britain because that was when the Thatcher decided to take on the, uh, the, most, the strongest union, the union with the strongest traditions of militancy, and smash it because she knew that if she smashed the miners' union, she could then deal with any other opposition to her. You know? uh, and in that context, and in that, if you like, that unique and special context, the uh, lesbian and gay some, some people involved in the lesbian and gay community in London took sides, you know? In those days, everyone was taking sides, you know? It was like, you couldn't be neutral about this issue. You're either for Thatcher and the state and the police, or you were for the miners defending their jobs, their communities. Because it wasn't a, a wage dispute, it was a dispute um, to, to close the mines down, to finish that industry completely. This was quite common to twin with particular communities because the national union I think later on in the strike, the National Union had all its funds sequestered, you know, it was seized by the government because they were carrying out so-called illegal strike. So any money you gave to the National Union of Mine Workers went to the government anyway. It's hard to explain to young people now what being gay was like then. Well, the main challenge in London was um, getting across to lesbians and gay people in the scene actually in the clubs and pubs, not the political people in meetings, but actually lesbian and gay people in the gay scene. Um, how important the minor strike was and how their interests as people, not just lesbians and gay people, but people in general, in terms of their jobs, their houses, their schools, their education, generally their welfare benefits, all of this was tied up in the miners' victory. They thought that, you know, the miners don't support us, so why should we support them? In Wales, that was a different argument. I mean, the argument there was, well, you know, everyone, everyone's, so many people are against the minor strike anyway. If we link up with these gay people, people hate us even more. And we expected, completely expected them to say, well, thank you for the money, and now go away. <laughs> but so when they invited us to visit them in Wales, that was extraordinary, really extraordinary. There was opposition to our visit, apparently, but the miners never told us this. They cleared all that away before we got there. They had all this debate before we arrived. We had a rule that if you wanted to have a say in the group, you had to collect money. It was lesbian and gay only, we decided. Um, some people were more were happier about that than others, but you know, looking back, I think it was a good idea to be a lesbian and gay only group because it enabled us to be free and funny and camp and silly in a way that maybe if there was a mixed group, we wouldn't have been able to do in those days. Because, you know, we were all feeling so much oppression then that we didn't really feel able to be ourselves even inside the labour movement, you know. Women, of course, they get paid much less than men. They didn't have the, uh, the money to actually keep the scene going. Lesbians organised in a much more sort of home-based way. They, they had informal networks. They didn't really have a lesbian scene. Also, a lot of the women that did feel that they were lesbians were part of the women's movement. Women often prioritised feminism over the gay stuff, understandably enough. They regarded you know, many gay men as being just as sexist as straight men, in, and they were in many instances. Some of them later split off to form a separate women's group, the Lesbians Against Pit Closures, which I regretted at the time. I can probably understand a bit more now than I did then, but I, I still regret it in a way that they split off so completely. We should some kind of union should have been possible. Well, in terms of the strike, no, we weren't successful because the miners lost. Uh, and we're living now with the consequences of the miners losing, you know? There's an old joke in Britain that uh, when Margaret Thatcher was asked what her greatest victory was, she didn't say uh, beating the miners, she said New Labour and Tony Blair. <laughs> because by defeating the miners, she moved the whole debate in Britain towards the right. The group itself was successful, I think. We raised a lot of money. We kept the, uh, we and along with two other groups that were supported the same village, we kept them fed. I'm almost ashamed to say it because the miners lost and to some degree we gained from it. You have to understand the miners union is very sort of macho, you know? And so once the miners union supports gay rights, every other union kind of has to, you know? 
And so miners supported gay rights at the, the Trade Union Congress and the Labour Party Congress, because in Britain the trade unions are affiliated to the Labour Party, they're part of the Labour Party. So the Labour Party policy was changed by the miners' union support for us. But of course, you know, we, we won in terms of our sex life, but in terms of every other part of our life, along with everybody else, we lost. I mean, I'm not speaking for LGSM here. This is my own view. Um, we always said, oh well, you know, it's in, you cannot achieve gay liberation under capitalism. And perhaps in terms of its, when it's, its full extent of sexual liberation, maybe that's true because there's capitalism, there's a position of women under capitalism, there's a position of the family under capitalism. You could have a, a theoretical debate about that. But what we didn't realize was that huge measures of legal equality and understanding could be achieved by the lesbian and gay movement under capitalism. Um, lots and lots of rich Tories are gay and eventually they were able to meet the human rights side of it, the purely sexual equality side of things. Of course the left isn't as strong as it was in the 70s and 80s, that's true. But I, I don't think it's dead and I think it's coming back and I think really in the, the couple of decades I've got left I think I'll, I'm going to try and encourage younger people to rediscover those lessons. Basic lessons, solidarity. I support you, you support me, we win, you know? Because all that we've got, the majority of people, is solidarity. We support each other. They've got the money and the courts and the police, but we've got solidarity. And if we could just teach that lesson, then we'll do well.